Welcome to my home park, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, for the start of the 2023 season. Let's see uh, what's new this year, let's talk about Valhalla. There's some markings that have been spotted outside, so we'll talk about those. Uh, and also share some tips and tricks for your next uh, visit to the park. So, obviously I have to start talking about this guy behind us, Valhalla. It's confirmed that it's coming back for technical rehearsals in about two or three weeks, which basically means that it will be some dry runs. So if you're here during that period, it could be open all day, it could be open for an hour, might only be open for 10 minutes. Equally, some of the effects may not be running on that uh, technical rehearsal, but it means that people will start to get to see what it's like. Um, I think it's so good to see it finally back after three years. Obviously the park didn't expect it to take this long. It shut it in 2019. Nobody knew the pandemic was coming. We've said that and Brexit and supply chains and technical issues have all kind of delayed the release of this ride. Uh, but it's so good to see it finally coming back. They're also being very cagey about what has actually changed. We know that they've kept some of the scenes, they've said that there's fire. Well, it looks like you're still going to get wet because they've still got the hoovers in the station that suck up the water, which I'm a little unsure about. Also said that they've improved sustainability. It's no secret this ride was an expensive ride to operate with all the gas and the water. Um, so it's good to see that they're looking for that sustainability. Considering this was built 23 years ago, technology has moved on a lot, so there'll be lots of new things in there, lots of new effects. They've also made some uh, improvements to maintenance and the uh, evacuation platforms, which again, just to kind of bring it up to modern standards. The good thing is, a lot of people were worried they were going to put in restraints. Looking at the boats, they've not done that. Um, so yeah, it'll be really good to see. I'm a little worried if you do still get absolutely soaked. This is England, it's not Florida, it's not Spain. You know, so in the summer, this is nice and warm. But right now, March, end of the year, it's cold, it's wet and it's windy. So I don't expect to stay dry on a ride like this, but I'm worried that it's still gonna get absolutely soaking. But until we get on it, until we see, let's reserve judgment. So the first tip I wanted to give was around tickets. Uh, if you come to the park these days, it's all e-tickets. It used to be wristbands in the day. You can still request a wristband when you come to the park, go to the ticket office if you prefer. Uh, a lot of people complain because it's you're always on your phone and they're worried about draining the battery, but there are some simple things you can do to help with that. The first thing is that you can make a group ticket. So if you buy all your tickets together, then you can make a single QR code for the entire group. Uh, you can do this now on the app. They've just recently added this and you can also do it on the website. Once you've done that, I would recommend that you take a screenshot of that ticket on your phone, set it as your lock screen, and then you don't have to fumble around with unlocking your phone, getting to the app, getting an internet connection, all that kind of stuff. It's just there. I always do that for when the four of us are here. And all I need to do is take my phone out of my pocket. As soon as I lift it up, the screen lights up, scan it, and on you go. Barely touches your battery life, um, and it's much more convenient. Uh, so definitely make group tickets, make them your lock screen, and it'll make your life a lot simpler. morning there with a go on uh, Starby Racers which seem to have had some new seats put on them they're more padded um, not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing and then for once the uh, the racing cars here had no queue so we just did that as well um, one thing that's not open today is Big Dipper it's closed for its 100th birthday uh, so they said they'll celebrate in August I'm hoping it's open long before then but right now they're scaffolding up the onion is missing they were doing some retracking, they're painting it, so I think it'll look good when it's done, but uh, I don't know at what point the season is going to open. back on probably my favourite coaster in the UK, bike on, absolutely love that ride. Uh, and Enzo, Enzo obviously the, the upcharged attraction, spinning seats on the back, still quite expensive though. Um, <laughs> fun little fact, I went on this ride a few years ago and I was a bit of an idiot, I, for whatever reason, didn't check my pockets and I was on the ride 
and I saw my keys fly out of my pocket. So somewhere on that ride, there's the keys to my car and my house and everything. Uh, and I had to grow up with my ex-wife to come down on a train from Edinburgh to be on the air. I'm going to make that mistake again. We just had some lunch there in uh, Coasters. Uh, there's so many food options in this park. You've got fish and chips, you've got hot dogs, you've got crepes, you've got the pizza kitchen, which is basically an all-you-can-eat pizza pasta buffet, uh, Coasters, which is slightly more expensive, and it's good to see they've brought back a lot of menu items that they removed during the pandemic. So they used to have quesadillas and burritos. They're back now, which is fantastic. Uh, you've also got, there's paninis at the entrance to the park. We've got Burger King on site. There's um, burgers in the, the hot ice. There's tons of options around here. Um, but yeah, we, we just had burritos and quesadillas and it's as good as I remember it being before. So definitely not a shortage of uh, food options. The other thing as well, some people aren't sure, you can of course leave the park during the day and return. So you know, you're in Blackpool, there are many, many options. You could easily come here in the morning, leave at lunch, go get some tea and then come back into the park. So. You know, anyone worried about can I leave and re-enter? Absolutely. <laughs> so, after lunch, went on the Pleasure Beats Express as usual. Um, there had been some rumours that that had been turned around to go the other direction, but. Uh, it seems to be operating the same way as it always does. Um, they also took away some of the set pieces at the end of the season, but they have been returned. To be fair, they don't seem to have been restored. They still look uh, just as bad as ever. There is a new soundtrack though, on the way around. Uh, speakers and audio. Uh, so they are doing some work to it, but I think it would be nice if they turned it back around again. In, uh, the original direction. <laughs> So you now go up the ramp that's uh, in front of the right. So curious if there's any other changes. I guess we'll find out where we go on. There's a lot of speculation at the moment about what might be coming next to the park. There was talk recently that there was going to be a big wheel. There was a gondola spotted on site. There was a trademark for the Pleasure Beach. Um, and then people started seeing markings particularly behind the Bolodrome, and lately loads of them along the front promenade. Um, I don't think those particular markings are for Big Wheel. Uh, it just, there seems to be far too many of them. I heard some talk, somebody said that a few years back there was a rumour of a, a ride that would leave the park, go across the road and come back in again. Um, I don't know what, you know, I, I don't think it's that either. You've got to think, whatever is next for the park, they must be in the planning stages. I mean, if you think about Icon, it, it, would have, it took them at least five years uh, to plan that. There were rumours kicking around before it actually was finally built and ready to go. Uh, but all the other parks in the UK seem to be putting in, you know, excessive investments. You know, you've got Thorpe Park putting in Project Exodus, you've got Alton Towers putting in Project Horizon, you've got Chessington putting in World of Jumanji. Uh, last year, the Flamingo Land put in Sick. Now, I realise this park is spending a lot of money on refurbishing their rides. You know, Valhalla obviously cost them something like four million. They've spent an absolute fortune on that. The Big Dipper right now is getting a major facelift for its birthday. Uh, and, they, you know, this park is fantastic at maintaining their rides. They always have been. But I think the enthusiasts, myself included, are like, what's next? It's been five years since Icon. I'm pretty sure the pandemic is not all planned back, but, you know, it's not like the park can just turn around to a manufacturer and go, hey, can we get a ride next year? You know, it takes a lot of planning picking the manufacturer, getting planning permission, etc. So whatever is next for the park, they've already started thinking about it. They may even have some uh, concrete plans, but it is interesting. There's, you know, what are all those markings for? I've heard some people saying Airbnb, some still think it's a big wheel, some think it could be another ride. Who knows? Uh, but it's, it's going to be interesting to watch this space and see how Blackpool reacts to all the other parks putting in these massive investments in new rides.
one other tip that I haven't uh, shared with you is around photos. Um, this park has two different types of photo passes. They've got one for the rides and one for characters and experiences, so over by the fountains. Uh, so be careful that you get the right one when you're here. Uh, but if you get the, the ride one, then you can have unlimited digital downloads throughout the day on all your favourite rides. Last year they did a, an all year pass for 50 quid, but then they changed providers. So I don't know if they're offering that this year, um, but you know, just get the day pass and you can get all your photos. Saved the best till last, end of the day on the big one. Uh, <laughs> leaving that till last is definitely going insanely fast. One thing I did notice, they've been doing a lot of painting work around here. Obviously, they're retracking sections of the ride, but uh, clearly, there's some sections that don't need retract, so they're just giving them a, a touch up, which is nice to see. So, it should look nice and fresh when it's all finished. Anyway, that's uh, us for today. I'm in Alton Towers tomorrow, so look out for that one. And, uh, if you've liked this, drop it a like, subscribe if you want to see some more, and uh, let me know in the comments what your favourite ride is at Pleasure Beach. Until next time, see you later.